bother the, figuring that out and at the risk of making myself go totally broke, if anyone will buy a t-shirt for $20, I will match your $20 in a donation to LMDA. We have, I believe, mediums and large, no, we have smalls and mediums, is that right, staff? We have smalls and mediums, medium and large, but if you need other sizes, and at least six of you need that size, Nicole has assured me of any size, so if we want the extra, come on up. <laughs> Come on, this is your chance to make $20, $40. Mediums. Um, I just want to make sure everybody knows I'm going to sign for the ONW Rescue Night Information. And we will send out the link to the Dropbox so that you may claim any pictures that you would like. I try to get as many people as I can. My apologies if I annoy you. But uh, the only thing I'm asking you to do is run photos. <laughs> Okay, seriously, okay. it helps make an extra 20 bucks for the organization. We make some money off of the t-shirt. You have a fabulous t-shirt to wear. Last call, because my understanding is they are not going to be at the banquet tonight. Anybody want a t-shirt? T-shirt, t-shirt. Okay. Thank you. The most high-tech uh, session we have, so um, well, I'm probably going to talk about the digital network, and um, I'm very happy to welcome you all back. And uh, <laughs> special effects, sorry, <laughs> special <laughs> effects coming up. Um, it seems like Peter is very, you know, it's an embodied experience that we have to be here in the room together to do together. And this virtual reality is something that we approach with a you know, little bit of trepidation. Um, what do we do with it? It's such a disembodied experience. People sitting by their computers and you know, and talking to each other or reading emails and tweeting and all of that. Um, it's all happening out there in the virtual space. And we're not good with the disembodied experience. But perhaps there is a way that we can use the, the tools, the new digital tools in the virtual network uh, to help us make better. Uh, to connect with other people, to learn about other cultures, but also to, you know, to, uh, to archive our, our, our papers, our, the work that we do, and, um, and to, um, uh, to expand our practical uh, universe. So today we have a um, super cool five digital networks, and I'm going to go in order to introduce them, and then um, uh, they all will uh, do their uh, short little Feel about the network, and we're gonna put them up and and, um, and show them to you guys. So uh, three of the people are actually here present, and then two are on the um, on Skype. One is in Spain, and the other one is in New York. So we have a, a digital virtual network happening right here. Um, so um, right. So the the, uh, the the five uh, five participants today is. Um, uh, Jana Rook and William Sullivan from the National New Play Network talking about New Play Exchange. Uh, cool. So here they are. Let's give it a big welcome. <laughs> All right, by Skype, we have Helen Manson and um, Gemma Nelson from Contemporary Performance Network. Can you guys say hello? <laughs> And then we have a uh, proponent also from the Polish Theater Institute, Anna Galas, uh, who is talking about um, what they have done to, uh, to to use digital tools to archive and to promote Polish theater. Anna. <laughs> and we have Ken Pernilia uh, from Disney Archibalds, whose second um, occupation is an uh, arch archivist. And he's going to introduce a very cool project uh, American Theater Archive Project, a very important project for archiving American theater. So let's give it up for Ken. <laughs> and finally, from Spain, we have Beatrice.
Katrin Kabur, uh, who's going to be talking about a new international Peter experience, the new Penn News website that they have done, which is uh, basically about collaboration, different artists from across the globe uh, collaborating on different projects. All right, so we're going to start with uh, Jojo and William, and this, this is the mic for you guys. Okay, now it's on. Awesome. Okay, hi, I'm Joe Drew. I'm the Associate Executive Director of the National New Play Network. Um, and as I'm sure many of you know, the National New Play Network um, is a member service organization. So we have 29 core member theaters and 43 associate member theaters, all of whom are dedicated to the development, production, and continued life of new plays. Um, our flagship program is the uh, Collaboration Fund, where three theaters come on board to do a, a rolling world premiere. So they premiere one single play within a year of each other. It's three separate productions across the country, and the hope is that it rolls on to more, to more plays um, and has a continued life after that. Um, but what we're here to talk about today is the New Play Exchange. So this is our newest program. It's our eighth program at NNPN. Um, and over the past three years, we've spent traveling around the country talking to artistic directors and playwrights and literary managers and managing directors and dramaturgs, um, talking about what they wanted for um, a new online system to ways to connect playwrights and theaters. Um, we got a major cornerstone grant from the Doris Duke Foundation, um, as well as uh, additional funding from Mellon and from the NEA. Um, and with our partners, LMDA being one of them, Chicago Dramatists, Playwrights Foundation, and the Playwright Center um, have created the New Play Exchange. Um, right now we're in beta testing of it, which means that it's just rolled out to playwrights alone, and actually tomorrow you all will be the first, so among the first uh, readers, what we call readers, who will be using the tool, and then after that we'll go to theaters. Um, in this fall we'll sort of go back and uh, continue working on it before we do a, a gigantic launch to the entire new play sector as of January 2015. Um, so very exciting. We're all really thrilled. It's sort of really has been in the making for three years as we've gone around the country and have a lot of really awesome feedback. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Gwydion, who's going to tell you how this works. Hi. Hi. I feel like I'm in a room of some really great friends, <laughs> and um, many of you I haven't met yet. So. Uh, I hope to get to know some more of you over the next uh, day or so. Please let me know if you can't hear me. Um, here's what the new play exchange is. I'm going to give you one sentence, and then I'm going to unpack it for about seven minutes. It is a neutral platform for connecting plays and producers built for the common good of the American theater. So now, what is that, and why are we doing it? There are about 15,000 playwrights in the United States. And I'm just going to use the United States, but we all know America is plural in LMDA. 15,000 playwrights. I'm one. And we produce, on average, about one new play a year. So 15,000 new plays enter the American theater every year. At the same time, there are about 1,500 world premieres. So somehow we choose 1,500, one out of 10, to produce every year. And the mechanism, the technology we are using to make that filter happen is the submission process. Everybody loves that, right? Um, that's our current technology. And it's, it's broken. It's bad software. It's, it results in huge stacks and overwhelming amounts of information to wade through. And, Playwrights madly looking for places to show their work and gatekeepers and this and that. And nobody is happy with the 1,500 that get selected. And nobody is happy with the way those 1,500 get selected. We have all kinds of patches we've applied to the software agents uh, who act as sort of interlocutors and intermediaries to determine quality. We have submission windows. We have contests where we pit plays against one another. So what we believe is that it's time to actually throw this entire system out the window, to let it go completely, and to replace it instead with a completely new paradigm, a new metaphor for connecting plays and producers, and that's the new play exchange. So I'm going to talk to you about it from three different perspectives. First, what it's like 
for a playwright. So if you've got four plays or so at any one time that you're trying to shill out in the world, and you're surrounded by this universe of thousands of theaters that you're trying to parse and figure out who's right for what, you have no idea, and you end up with massive Gmail folder full of you know, plays you've sent out, and you have no idea when you're going to hear back, and it, you, you're sending to theaters that really don't like your work, and there's no mechanism for getting feedback, and you're completely confused, and you have a bad spreadsheet and sticky notes, and when, where do I go, and oh my god, it's horrible. Instead of submission, instead of making sure you have the right criteria and you know, kowtowing at the institution to say, please, will you have me with my work? We will replace all of that with sharing as a paradigm, with sharing your work at the new play exchange. So the task of the playwright will change from trying to find people who will listen to me to talking about my work, tagging it in an effective, accurate way and making it discoverable, putting it one place where it can be found instead of a thousand places where no one really is ready to see it. Now one place is the new play exchange. Very simple, it's a database of new plays. You upload your script or a sample of your script. You tag it with a variety of criteria, metadata, keyword subject, metadata, um, number of characters, the ethnic breakdown of those characters, uh, synopsis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now let's flip that around and imagine what that's like for a theater. You've got one new play slot you are trying to fill and you know your budget can handle no more than five actors and the theme of your season is climate change or the planet and you know that you need to investigate um, Asian American women writers. Right now, what do you do to fill that slot? Well, you, know, you might email your dramaturg on staff and three of your friends and uh, you know, five other people that you happen to know and you just say, hey, do you know anything like this? And you sort of hope something falls in your lap and it's imperfect and it's a, it's a, it's a, a bad system. But with the new play exchange, there is now one place you can go to go look for work. So instead of opening up a submission window and taking the first thousand plays that come in to try and find that one climate change play by an Asian American woman author, with a cast of under five. You can go right here, plug in those search criteria and find all of the plays in the American theater that meet those criteria. It gets cooler than that. So the third perspective is yours, ours in this room. People whose job it is to read, think about, and evaluate plays. In the main, you know, there are other things that we all do as well, but in the main, what that process entails is two things, right? Endorsing plays, like saying this play is good, or this play is promising, or this play, uh, you know, sings, this play is great in seven different ways, and this play is great for you, theater X, the other half is matchmaking, endorsing and matchmaking. And let me guess, there are more plays that you love than plays you can do, right? So what do you do with that energy? What do you do to support the plays that you care about, that you're passionate about? In the new play exchange, we'll be able to recommend them. Log on, find the play, and write one to five sentences about the plays that you care about. One to however many sentences you want. So that when the theater comes in and does a search and finds the global warming plays by Asian American authors with under five characters, they see, wow, this one was recommended by Julie Dukner. I know her, I respect her, I believe in what she has to say, and this one was recommended by Liz Engelman, and I know her and love her and know what she has to say, and this is Danielle Amato, and this one is Jimmy Selecki. Wow, I am now suddenly relying on the wisdom of the most important professionals from throughout the country, and not just the one I have on staff. The other thing it does, and I don't think there's anything like this right now in the American theater, when you all write coverage for the plays that you're thinking about and considering for the theaters for which you work, and that might be your day job and the passion theater that you work for on the weekends and the contests you read for, you write coverage and you store it in somebody else's database. And when you change your job and you go somewhere else, that database is gone. It's still there, but you don't have access to it anymore. Wrapping up. Wrapping up. Well, again,
in while I, while you can. So um, this will be a permanent archive of your relationship with plays and playwrights that you can always access forever. So this was a little commercial. Tomorrow we have an hour. We're going to be showing you this incredible depth, and you'll have a chance to sign up for yourself with a free beta code, um, as will every member of LNDA. I can't wait to talk to you more about it. We've got like an hour-long presentation tomorrow, so come. Yeah. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I will just start uh, telling you a little bit about the, the place where I work, the uh, Polish Theatre Institute, uh, because probably you've never heard about that. Um, we are the institution of the Ministry of Culture and National Heritage, and we were founded in 2003 by the, by the Ministry. Uh, and we are um, basically um, the organization that is documenting and promoting contemporary Polish theater. And main our aims, uh, except this book, uh, is um, the, 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 the other aim is also that we do many educational projects in the field of uh, contemporary theater. Uh, we have six departments and um, Later on the project, this e theater website that I will tell you about uh, is in frame of the documentation department. Uh, so um, basically, this documentation department is um, like very important part of our uh, activities. Uh, it, was, uh, it was also one of the reasons why the institute was uh, open actually in 2003. And um, it uh, owns the biggest collection of contemporary theater documentation in Poland that includes photographs, press clippings, posters, programs, and much more. And it is also responsible for this, the, uh, actually the biggest uh, single internet website entirely devoted to the contemporary theater, this e-theater.pl. E uh, the second issue is the theater pedagogy department in which we do many educational projects for children and teenagers and one of them which is like really important it's called a summer in the theater grant program in which we give grants for theaters that normally will close during the summer and um, because of these grants they can organize workshops and many activities for uh, children and teenagers. Uh, the, the other department is project department. Basically, we give grants in a few pro theater programs. One is called Tat Polska. It's like Have Theater Will Travel. It's a program that supports mobility of theater in Poland. A national competition for staging contemporary Polish drama that supports realization of contemporary Polish plays. And the main prize is like 50% of reinvestment of the cost of the production. Uh, the other one, Classic Alive, is a special program prepared for the next year because we are going to celebrate 250th anniversary of public theater, and it supports productions of Polish classical texts. Uh, we have we also edit many books, like you can see a few of them. Uh, however, I will just say that, uh, for example, last year we published completed text of Jerzy Grotowski. It was a three years re research project. Um, and we, in this book, we um, edited all his essays, interviews, and text uh, of his lectures. And the department where, where, um, where I work, where, which I direct, 
It's the international project department, and we organize many different international projects. Uh, one of one of our um, tasks is also publish the uh, internet newsletter called Poland on Stage, uh, in which we three times a year we uh, inform about the most important issues of the Polish theater. Okay, so now I will just pass to this uh, e-theater website. Uh, this this website actually was founded um, because um, because of the closing of one magazine called Ruch Teatralny, uh, which is like the theater movement, and it was a magazine that was actually publishing the most important theater critics and theater uh, text from all other different newspapers and magazines, and it was appearing like three times a year. And when it had like financial problems and uh, it had to be closed, our director decided. Oh, sorry, okay. uh, our director decided like to move this idea to um, to the to and to do such a website that will basically um, take these responsibilities. We have four persons working for this um, website constantly, and they update it every day. You can see the website here. Uh, at the beginning, it was only the uh, website that was in putting the uh, or putting on 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 the internet uh, the most important text uh, that was appearing in in different press um, press magazines and newspapers. Um, it was also like a repertory um, tool. Another that was informing about premieres, but of course during these ten years of existing, it was getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. And right now, it like has got many, many tools. Um, like normally in the middle, you can see the text that is like a text of the day. But so they are publishing like the most important text that was appearing recently. Um, there are some videos as well. Photos. We have like everyday different person that we are promoting. It's like a person of the day. On the left side, you can see like the um, tool to look for the repertory uh, every day in in different uh, cities in Poland. There are also premieres of the month, etc. And on one side, you can see a, a place which is like 2014 theater in Poland, which I will tell you a little bit later about that. Um, there is also like a second part of this website, which is like e theater TV, and of course with the whole process of uh, using tools of internet, we decided that it should be also a part where uh, the theaters can publish short videos about the performances. Okay, this is this theater in Poland tool. It's really interesting because every year we prepare statistics about all uh, Polish theater life. And there you can see, like, um, unfortunately it is in Polish, but it can be really inspiring, I think, uh, where you can find uh, through the city uh, information about dramatic theaters, music theaters, puppet theaters, etc. Then you have, like, the institutions, and through different ways you can find information about uh, theaters, but also festivals, also uh, school, theater schools, Etc. And if you choose, for example, a dramatic theater, there will be a list of all of dramatic theaters that are in Poland. And choosing this that you are concretely interested, like for example, I choose here like TR Warsaw, which is one of the most important stages in Warsaw. You can have all the database about this website, also about its budget, the um, number of stages, the number of uh, seats in in its in this theater, and in frame of this uh, of this tool, we also publish like every season statistics. A uh, quite important uh, tool that we are having on this e theater is the virtual archive, and we during the process of dig digitalization of all our archive. Uh, we, we decided to have such a tool on, on this website. And it's really um, where the arrow is, it's written in Polish uh, virtual archive. And you can find information about actually all the performances and 
people involved in Polish theater from 50s. So here I just put uh, the name of Jerzy Brodowski, and when, when you look for that, you can find his biography, and also the list of all performances he did with the dates of premiere and exactly information in which theater it was, it was premiered, and also about the people that collaborated in frame of this performance. And if you choose performance that you're interested in, like I choose Acropolis, you can find articles that, um, that are uh, about this performance, but you can also, you, you also have a tool to choose photos, program, and multimedia if it, if it exists. Uh, I will just skip for a moment and open, and open this website once again to show you also another possibility because uh, you can look through the person but also you can look, look, uh, look for the information through the title. If we put Hamlet, sorry, and we do search, then will appear all the performances or the titles connected with Hamlet. It can be William Shakespeare, but it can be also another one. If we choose Hamlet by Shakespeare, the all performances of Hamlet will appear with the date of the premiere and the place of the premiere. So we have like, you can see. <laughs> yeah, and if we choose, for example, this Hamlet, if you are interested, from uh, 1985, you will have all the information about the people who are starting in this in this performance, and also you can download the program. Uh, okay, and just I will go to the PowerPoint. And the last thing I just want to say is uh, that uh, we are in this process of digitalization, so um, it is really interesting that at the beginning when we started it. Uh, we decided uh, we choose ten titles, uh, one hundred titles that was the, that were digitalized. And right now there is like a special tool where you can click uh, and order the materials of the performance that you are interested in. Uh, normally during one year we digitalize about six hundred to seven hundred uh, titles of the performances, but right now we have like. 10% of all, all the listed performances done. So we still have a lot of work uh, to do. Uh, however, we also think about the next tools to do and I will just end it saying that right now we are preparing the new website which is Teatro de Kaszkona and it is um, devoted to educational projects. And on this website, um, for example, teachers from school, they will find the scripts for uh, for the lessons and how to and the program how to uh, teach about the contemporary uh, theater and the last one uh, the the last project that we just started to prepare and it will be also a tool for this e theater is the electronic encyclopedia of Polish theater and it will have like personal database and entires by subject. But what is, what is really interesting is that um, all uh, articles will be created by the specialist of Polish theater. So it will, it will not uh, be exactly like Wikipedia, but it will be more like a very professional tool that people can um, look and um, read articles that are really prepared by uh, professional uh, researchers. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Dong here virtually from Spain. Um, that is the book. It's going to talk about um, Nita News and um, Nita Corp. Are you guys ready? And Hanita is our assistant today helping us. She's going to be acting as proxy of, um, of um, batteries. We're gonna, batteries going to talk to the IP. And we will we'll see the screen uh, over here. And um, Hanita will, um, will help us. Yeah, are we good? Are you guys good? Yes. Right. Do you want to turn it off from the laptop so we can see her? So people can see her? All right. Beatrice, yeah, we can see you. Everybody, hello, Beatrice from Spain. Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right, so we point, point the, um, the website is Beatrice Moment. Beatrice is here, so you guys can, can start. Hello. You guys can start? Uh, Hanifa, are you ready? We can start. Uh, Hanifa is ready, so we can start. Patrice, you can start? You can go ahead and get started. All right. Yes. There, is like like a, there is like a three minutes delay. Oh, OK. Yes? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. This good. Um, I have the the how wrong feed in my screen divider. So the thing is that I was counting and watching the big screen through the how wrong streaming. <laughs> Can you do that? How wrong people? Like you were showing the screen before while Anna was talking. Oh, so you see the slides in the power. Yes. Oh, wow, this is sophisticated. Yeah. <laughs> You're like in double virtuality. She does it better than the computer screen. She does. She wants to see that. There you go. Thank you very much. So, um, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry for the delay. I'm going to tell you to annoy annoying. We will fix it. So that's the that's the the homepage of the site called the International Theater Experience, which is the uh, the company I co-founded with Doug Howe. Some of you may know him. He's from he's a theater director from New York, and and you can go and if you don't mind, you can go through the second tab that we have open, which is divisions. Because what uh, interests us in, in night is the, the international scene. So we had this plan that, that uh, give me a second, sorry. There you go. Okay, so, so we did the, the plan on how to, how to build what we wanted to exist. And the first thing that we were missing was a site in which you could you could find theater related news from all over the world with high quality. For example, if you go to the Guardian, you can find some news on what's happening in the United Kingdom. If you go to there's a lot of different sources where you can find news like scattered all over. But where can you find news from I don't know, New Zealand and Mexico and Testing, testing, testing. Oh, okay. Sorry. What? It's okay, it's okay. Go ahead, Beatrice. Something happened? No, no, it's all good, it's all good. You can go ahead. Okay, I'll explain a few things. The idea is to find all the world theater news that we can collect or create because we have um, some people helping us, writing news for us. And, and we are doing our best in uh, aggregating material. We have some books collecting news, but we, we try to be polite in the sources. So when the news are aggregated, we, we go through them, we make a little extra for you to understand what the news is about, and then we don't post the whole, uh, the whole thing, just the, the beginning of it, and then we link it to the source. If you can show them Hanife, the, the interview that we chose before. Sure. Uh, we 
is yeah that one. Okay. We also have give me sorry. Okay, yes, you, you will see that in the body. There you go. Ah, okay, yeah, it's it's you, the website for sizes for different devices, so if you would see it a big in a in a big screen, it would look differently. It's the responsiveness, it's really really annoying when you're designing things and consume some of you know so if you click on on the on the one we said anita the one with ben sure. do you have that yeah thanks ben okay yep got it good so you can see that the, the material is there and then we have ah there it is you have at the beginning a little intro that the staff of night news writes that's not from any site, even, even if the material is aggregated. And then at the end, you have the source of it that you can click if you're interested in reading the rest of the material. And, and then one thing that we do is at the section called Spotlight, which focuses on some part of the world. We started the Spotlight with Chile, and, and we created uh, different interviews to be fulfilled online by, by the playwrights that we were interested in featuring in the Spotlight in Chile. Do you, can you click on Spotlight, please? Sure. So what we do in the Spotlight is try to show you like, like a, a panoramic of what's happening in some, in some particular place in the world. In, in there. Yeah, you have multimedia content as well, like, like uh, videos, live channels, this channel is, is there for you as well. And what else are we doing? We, we have a lot of collaborators from all over the world. We have collaborators in Slovenia, for example, and in Mexico, and in, in I don't know, I'm just giving you examples from places. You have a, a page in the site called Publish, if you are interested in writing for Night News, and you can click there. Can you show them, Hanife, please? Like in the footer section. So if any of you want to publish any article, you just click on publish and you will see the guidelines and, and feel free to send us any article that you're interested in. We don't, we don't, publish, we don't publish any critics or listings because that would be way too much for the, the idea of the site. And we, we are planning right now, we, are, we have a couple of developers working on, on making it more, more social than it is. Because the next step for, for Nightcore is to create Night Network, which will be based on this, basically. More or less, that's that. I'm sorry, I get super nervous when I am. <laughs> And that which was supposed to be there just got married yesterday. So it's like <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that was getting married yesterday, so that's why he wasn't he couldn't be here. Well, I guess that's a good you know, excuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Beatrice. We're gonna keep you on. We're gonna keep you on. Don't go away. We're gonna keep you on for Q and A. So don't go away. Um, stay stay in and just stay with us. All right. So the, uh, the next person is Ken Seninga, who's going to be talking about American uh, Theatre Archive Project. All right. Great, that works. That's all right, great. Nice homepage. Um, I don't know about you all, but I'm completely geeking out on these other projects now. <laughs> <laughs> Just run away to my computer and start uh, clicking through them. Um, the uh, American Theatre Archive Project started an idea in the fall of 2009 at the uh, American Society for Theatre Research Conference. There's a number of people in this room who are also members of that organization um, that primarily serves um, theatre scholars. Uh, and we were talking about um, uh, the fate of, of theatre collections and established theatre archives uh, and what possibly the scholarly organization can do uh, about it. Um, and we also then started to talk about, well, uh, there's sure a lot of theater that's being um, produced that is disappearing as quickly as um, closing 
night. Um, and was there something that we could do as a community, um, primarily uh, initially as theater scholars, but which quickly expanded to, um, to stem that loss? And so um, the following summer um, at the LNDA conference uh, in Banff, um, I had a couple of, uh, hosted a couple of conversations about that, a number of people in this room um, made contributions um, towards this idea. And, and, then, and then the name started to come about of, of the American Theater uh, Archive Project. So it started initially as an ad hoc committee of the American Society for Theater Research, but then quickly got um, other support of uh, Theater Library Association, Society of American Archivists, Performing Arts Roundtable, and LNDA um, to support it. Uh, we came up with a mission statement. So um, American Theater Archive Project, our ATAP, supports theater makers in archiving records of their work for the benefits, uh, for the benefit of artists, <coughs> scholars, patrons, and the public. Um, and we uh, got a number of uh, volunteers to start talking about what this project could be um, from all over the country. And um, so it was a couple of years, really, of, of talking um, uh, and blue skying it. And then uh, about two years ago, um, we came up with the, this uh, idea of um, creating this initiation program. Um, so it's a collaboration of, uh, a type of collaboration of, of scholars, um, dramaturgs, literary managers, uh, archivists, pr primarily, um, that would work directly with theater companies in a conversation uh, about uh, what they're creating and how they're saving it, um, which is a very long-term um, process. So this is a little weak connection. Um, so we started um, uh, with some companies in, in New York City. We got a grant from the Lucille Rotel Foundation um, to start working with a, a few theater companies, the Atlantic Theater Company, New York Theater Workshop, um, Cherry Lane Theater, um, primarily to pilot this idea of going in and having a conversation with uh, hopefully the entire staff of a theater company um, to talk about what's important to them about the work that they do um, and what they think uh, the mission of their theater is and what the mission of the archives might be, um, what's important to save. Um, and then doing an initial, uh, the second phase is doing initial assessment of interviews, kind of in-depth interviews with people from all departments um, in a theater company, and then coming out with um, recommendations uh, for what can be, how an archival program can be started, and that can be as diverse as the, the theater that's created. There's not one way to do it. Um, and then uh, to come up with a plan um, to start working on it um, in terms of what needs to be saved and who's gonna have access to it. Um, and then uh, at the same time, we created a, um, a manual, which we published online last year, which I'm um, quite proud of. Uh, people are using Preserving um, Theatrical Legacy, an archiving manual for theater companies. Um, because uh, even though we have established some teams across the country, um, there's not uh, those uh, personnel resources in all areas of the country. So, um, and here's just a table of contents of it. It's a free download, uh, and a number of people have started using it not just uh, in uh, North America, but actually we've gotten comments from uh, various places uh, around the world. Just to start thinking about this, because most theater practitioners don't think about uh, the documentation process and, um, uh, and what happens uh, to, to the theater after they're done, after the live event is over. Um, but it's, uh, but it uh, extends into greater conversations about, about legacy, about, we talked a little bit about before, uh, cultural impact, um, most theater companies get interested, maybe, in the project, uh, in their archival program around an anniversary, um, to be like, where, where's the stuff? Where is the evidence of everything that we've been um, doing? And, uh, and also partly for, for funding um, and to connections with audiences um, to talk about that this is a long relationship. This has taken place over time. It's not just this, this uh, evening that we're spending together. So this is a very long-term project. Um, ASTR, uh, this past year, committed to it as an integral part of that organization um, and is now writing it into the bylaws and it's giving it a budget. Um, and we're also doing some um, other fundraising around it. But the best model we've come up with uh, is really um, this local team model 
the local ATAP team. There's um, teams in, uh, in New York, uh, in, in Seattle, in Austin, um, here in Boston. There are conversations uh, beginning, I believe, with Company One, um, and also a local funding model. We had initially thought we were like, oh, let's go for the, the big money, the NEA. <laughs> Um, uh, for them, you know, and there's a lot, a lot of competition there, and we're also talking about you know other other sources of government and foundation, um, but uh, but the most useful relationships have developed on the local level when local funders can see can talk about um, giving money to their communities and talking about local impact of, of theater and the culture fabric of cultural um, life. So uh, the the website itself is uh, is. Just quite simple now, um, and it's just initially it was built as a way to um, just connect inter people who are interested in being um, members of teams uh, with one another. Um, and now we're trying to figure out a way to uh, open it up more to um, to theaters. Now that we have both our archival, um, the uh, initiation program, and and the manual um, <coughs> available. But um, but it's long, it's a long term project, and we hope that. Uh, ASTR, LMDA, and these other organizations, um, and TCG uh, will continue to uh, be committed to it because any kind of archival program once started, it's, it's got to be woven into the fabric uh, of an institution. So we think about um, saving the documentation of our process and product as we create and share uh, our shows, and it just goes into our archives. So we can dig into it if we want to open up a show again, and we can share it with other um, with, with our own staff, um, with other staffs, but the idea is that these archival programs um, are in residence, but stay close to the actual practicing theater company, and then we can have ongoing conversations, perhaps with local repositories or other repositories when, um, at the end of a theater company's life, when it's no longer gonna be producing, where does that stuff go so it can still be uh, accessible? But primarily we're having conversations with active theater companies so they can have their own archives and use their own archives and share their archives um, and at the same time uh, save time and money, which always get the, the interest of uh, the viewership. So that's all for now. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you. Gemma Nelson, and, and we're here uh, talking about Contemporary Performance Network. Um, I'm going to briefly give you some information, sort of overall information about the network, and then Gemma's going to talk a little bit about some of the projects we do. Um, right now, we're looking at the front page of the network. Um, we started it in 2010, and to date now it's about 5,900 members on the network, and that extends into about 46,000 members on Facebook. and. 9,000 on Twitter, and um, it's primarily um, focused uh, on artists, presenters, scholars, and festivals, and it's meant to uh, be a social uh, sort of, uh, like a community organizing tool for artists, either meet each other or meet scholars or meet presenters, and to collaborate. Um, you can see at the top of the, um, the page is a map of where the members are, and then below that is uh, some of the newest members that have joined. And then a feed from the blog, which at the moment has a lot of opportunities and was just featuring the um, queer performance at BAM that was last night in New York. Uh, under that is forums. And this is where uh, network members can uh, post ideas. There's a lot of posts for calls. A lot of times people are looking for people to be involved in projects or festivals or commissions. Um, and then under that is a video we'll come back to of the book project that we did this year. That's an annual book project. 
and then you have the activity stream. So it's like a mini Facebook for the contemporary performance field. Uh, under that is events. So these are, net, these are network members who are posting their events. These can again be open calls, they can be performances, um, they can be workshops. A lot of people are uh, posting about workshops that they're doing in different countries. And then the, below that is member blog posts and then uh, photos and some of the top members who are posting at the moment. Um, if you go back up to the top and click on members, uh, you can see a listing of some of the members. These are the most recent members that have uh, joined in the last couple of days. At the top of that, uh, where you see the search, to the right of that says advanced search. And if you click on that, this is how artists can find each other and uh, scholars can find artists um, and presenters can find artists, everyone can find each other. And uh, you can look by the city or the state, the performance discipline, you know, keywords in the bio and the bio and also a special keywords. So let's say we're looking for artists from Albania. If you go to country and click, scroll down to Albania, which is the third one, and click on that and then scroll down and hit search. Did that happen? Yeah, it did. Um, okay. Uh, then you'll see see at the bottom there's uh, you have five members from Albania. The bottom one is Arnold, and if you click on him, you can see an example of one of the member sites. So this is Arnold. Um, he's uh, posted some a video of his work, some photos. Um, he. He joined in October uh, 2013, and then under you have the bio and uh, keywords and things like that. Um, next up, if you look at groups, scroll back to the top and click groups. So these are network member um, created groups, and they can be any they can be anything from uh, thematic to ramp sites to people working on their own um, projects, uh, different facets of the field. If you go to the top to featured groups, you can see far to the far left digital media and performance. And you can click on that. That's one of the groups. Uh, this group was created by uh, Whitney B. Hunter, who is a, a sort of performing and um, multimedia artist in Brooklyn, I think. There's 141 members in his group. There's a discussion forum. And, uh, and so artists, apply, artists uh, sort of post to this, or curators or, or scholars post to this, and then people can post inside, those, inside the forum. And they can also just comment on the wall. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was all I was going to show you. You can, you can click around. There's a lot more. Um, the, I would say this project is sponsored or is funded by sponsors. So we sell, if you look to the right, we sell sponsorships to um, really educational programs, nothing else. So um, you can see there's University of Roehampton, there's the um, School of the Art Institute of Chicago, there's Naropa in, uh, in Colorado, and then there's Das Arts in uh, Amsterdam, I think. And then Jim is going to talk a little bit about the two projects. If you go back to the home page and scroll down to the book video, you can hit play and it'll that's just a little flip through of the actual book. So this is the first book project that we produced. We produced it last year and the idea was to make an open call to uh, members of the network for projects that they'd done over the previous year. So this is a collection of whoever wanted to contribute work that they produced in 2013. Uh, members gave us their information and each got a spread in the book which tells about the project, a bio of the company, and how to contact them. We then took all this information and printed the books uh, and sent them to 200 presenters and more actually um, as a collection of work, examples of work from the network and a way to extend the mission of the network and the reach of it. Um, we got about 350 responses this year, it was great, um, made for a very thick book. So that's the Contemporary Performance book, and it's an annual uh, project. We'll be doing it every year, and we will be producing other books as well. 
Um, if we, if you have the other link that we sent you, which is the Special Effects Festival, if you could go to that now. So this is a festival that we produced in New York during January, the festival time, APAP. And again, this was pulled from people from the uh, Contemporary Network. We did this uh, very off the cuff this past year, so we asked people who were already in the city or going to be in the city, some international artists. Uh, if you can scroll down, you can see a little bit of who the works are that were in the festival. Um, we had a mix of performers from uh, different disciplines, and uh, we had a great time doing it. So that gives you an overview of some of the work that we've done with Contemporary Performance Network and that we're continuing to do as we expand the network and continue to reach new audiences. That's it. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much, Brad. It'll keep growing. Yeah. I mean, uh, right now there are about 180 playwrights in there and 250 plays, uh, but that's only the drop in the bucket. So, like, when those plays are 50 years old, they'll still be sitting in the. We'll figure that out between now and then. Yeah. No, I know, and I do too, and we do too. I mean, we think of it as a like a 10 year project to get it where it needs to be, and then we'll see what it transforms after that. But yeah. 
your participation is going to help us answer all of these questions. So that's the 30th for our chooses, if the playwright is responsible for their own content, so they choose whether they want to put it at full play, 10 page sample, or if they're re represented by an agent, we imagine that the agent will be on there. Great. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, another question? Um, yeah, it was uh, uh, when Caden and Gemma were talking about um, that they had gotten the funding from the, um, the educational program, so I was wondering if the other co-panelists could talk about um, what, uh, how you thought about um, sustainability of these amazing new projects, both in terms of um, labor and, um, and and fundraising, because I think we're all working on things that we that are long term projects that we're talking about. Like it'll know what it is in ten years. Well, what's the plan? Because that you know, for those of us who are founders of projects, there's a certain amount of energy that you have for it, you know, when it's new. But like, what what is the plan to sort of keep it going and hand it off and bring more people on and, and share the load? <laughs> I think the really quick answer is it's a nonprofit. If there's been conversations around the new play exchange about spinning it off into its own nonprofit down the road, but it's a combination of granting and um, there's a very low price point for users. But come tomorrow. Yeah, um, and maybe that is, and I don't even have that with it. Gonna do it for the next ten years, or you know? are you be, are you gonna uh, be able to do this project in ten years? So, what is your future plan? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, the night has more things that would we would I just explain to you. If you can, if you go to nightcorp.com. You will see that we have different areas. We are we are producing shows. We are organizing congresses. We are helping other projects to happen, as well as keeping night news alive and running and moving on to the next projects, which are creating night network and then night nation. We yes, we will, uh, and and it's because. We, we are working in different areas, which on our experience is the way we learn to survive in theater. And this, this sounds a little bit strong, but it's, it's been difficult to, to just stay in the theater, doing theater, it's hard enough. And I think that that prepares you to, to start difficult projects and, and go through with them. Am I, am I making any sense? Do you understand what I mean? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, so, if you if you were asking about the business plan, that's a longest and more boring question. You know what I mean? Answer. Um, and yes, write me if you are interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yes. We have questions. <laughs>
this, um, this free panel, the building digital networks, um, building inter, um, inter um, institutional collaboration and democracy and leadership are kind of um, um, my classic trifecta um, thinking because um, you know if you have the network, you can find the institution in which you can take the leadership and collaborate with it. Um, so um, it's a, supposed to be uh, kind of a, the, the theme of the conference. Uh, is how do we build the future? We build it by collaborating, by partnering with people, and how these partnering people gonna connect with them, and uh, and we gonna take a leadership on those connections. Okay. Other questions? Uh, Jules, you have a question?
because it seemed like it needed to be made. People wanted it. And um, then after we had it for a while, institutions came to us and wanted to sort of support it and to run their programs on the side. And uh, it's very important to us that the network is free to the people who are inside of it. And also on the posting opportunities, we try not to post any opportunities that cost the artist or the scholar or the, anyone who's participating money to apply. So. Okay, any questions? Yeah, I think you know right now the, uh, during the beta test we don't have that functionality built into what we're doing. But yes, um, the, the intent is that anyone who is a member of the New Play Exchange is fully searchable by a wide variety of criteria, um, so that we can help foster networks. Networks being what we are all about. That was an excellent uh, comment. We live in the, the era of the age of the network right now, and so uh, you know that that model. Is Uh, well, you know, the network really is focused on the contemporary performance field, so it's really only the people who are involved in that field that are on the network. Um, sometimes audience members wander into the melee of the network and enjoy being there, but um, we don't partner with other networks, but we do feed them our streams so that when uh, someone posts a workshop or something on our network, it immediately posts it into the expanded sort of social presence of the network, like on Facebook. So they post to the 5,900 people on our network, and that goes to 4,600 or 46,000 people on Facebook. Okay, good So we're going to go into tremendous depth tomorrow, but um, it's the latter of those. It's actually only one tool with different modes for people doing and accomplishing different tasks. And um, recommendations are not thumbs up, they're just, they're written. Um, so it's not just a thing or a number of stars, it's actually your thoughts uh, about a play that you love. Um, and your private notes about a play, your coverage, is this is the whole point, is that it's now accessible both to the theater you've written it for and to you forever. So your archive becomes your archive of your intellectual property, your, your thinking. But, but, but it's not viewable by anybody else. Right. Except, it's so private. Th it's private. So that's very separate from the, pu the public recommendations, which are public and signed by you so people know that you're writing them. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, any questions? Any more questions you have? Yeah, go ahead, Jess.
here about the previous question. Um, uh, any concerns about the uh, stability and the longevity of the networks and the software that supports them? So you're asking what uh, what software we use? No, the stability and longevity of the network that you guys using, and the, um, the stability of the software that you guys using. Are you concerned about it ever? Uh, I'm speaking for the new PlayStation. No, I mean the, we're using an out of out of the box software called Ning, N I N G, and uh, they're pretty good at securing that. They, I don't think they've had any uh, security leaks. We don't collect, and we don't really collect any data that would people could use, like birthdays or social security numbers or home addresses or anything like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any concerns. We're built on an open source platform called Drupal. Uh, there's a wide community of developers that it's lasted for forever. The White House uses it. Nike uses it. Um, half of the nonprofits I know that I've worked for uh, for the last 20 years have, have used it. Says that supports on Drupal. Um, <clears throat> so, but, but we do talk about in terms of um, uh, foreign digital uh, archives. You know, a lot of the things that we're creating now, whether they're uh, scripts or designs or almost everything, is foreign. People are using computers to uh, generate work that's going to be in, in, in the theater. And so, the archive, so much of the archive now being generated is digital and based on certain kinds of software to open it up. So, that's a big discussion. Theater companies about um, the stability of your archives, uh, which is different from the stability of, of your website. Which uh, these, you know, it's just a thing now that websites get refreshed uh, every couple of years, if not more often. And so, portability of the contents is, is just part of the discussion. But some of the other stuff in terms of archiving, um, we we have to think about this because it's on a, a CD. Oh, what's that? Um, <laughs> it doesn't mean it's permanent at all. Um, so we have to think about. All right, we have to wrap it up. Um, thank you everybody for participating and thank you our wonderful panelists for bringing the wealth of information to us and uh, from coming from all over the world for this conference and uh, to exchange ideas and to maybe collaborate in the future. Um, thank you everybody. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you, can, you can tell that to, to whomever asked. All right, um, um, we're going to disperse now. You guys can go to dinner or can go prepare for the banquet. And I see everybody um, in the evening at the banquet. And afterwards, we're going to go have a drink at the restaurant in the highest hotel as we did yesterday. Thank you, everyone.